15th, okay. you will get re- rebates in the form of a check. And uh, this is a wonderful thing for the whole shop local movement. Um, you can pick up a card anywhere that uh, is honoring uh, this program, including right here at the Heartland. Uh, receipts uh, totaling 100 or more will get, uh, I think, $50 back. Receipts totaling 150 or more get $50 rebate. Oh, no, $25 and $50 rebates. In any case, it's getting paid to shop local. We love sh- people shopping local. Please shop local. If you, if you actually have the ability to shop at all, which is, you know, a whole nother question. Okay, we're still here at Live from the Heartland, and we have been joined by our second guest, Paula Basta. Welcome. Hey, Katie. This, Good morning. This is a first for us, right? It is a first, yes. I'm so glad. I know. It's great. It's wonderful to be here. It's a nice snowy morning and uh, happy to get us into the holiday spirit. And you have good radio clothes on. Oh, do I? Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. I think that's a compliment. It is because, you know, <laughs> it used to not matter what we looked like up here, but now we've got <laughs> filming and, oh my God, that's you know, right. winds up on YouTube and... <laughs> I can't even watch. I don't. I don't really have radio uh, wardrobe. The, the wonder of YouTube. It, I think it's great. Well, it it's wonderful. Great. Paula, um, you are a neighbor, and yes. yet uh, I have probably not ever um, really done a whole lot of work with you, despite the fact we've both been active in the same neighborhood for yes. a long time. Yes. So. Tell us what you've been doing sure, and what brought you to make the decision to run for office. Sure. Great. Well, thanks again, Katie, and thanks to the Heartland. It's wonderful to be here running into some old friends here today. I've been coming to the Heartland for almost 30 years now. I moved to Chicago in 1979, um, and my partner and I live in Rogers Park. And uh, right now, I run the busiest senior center in the city of Chicago wow. at, uh, at Lawrence and Damon. And it's a really important and busy, busy place. We what, see over what's thousands the name of, of people. It? The Northeast Levy Senior Center. The Levy Senior. We were just on Channel 7 last night, as a matter of fact. We were having holiday luncheons, and it's a busy place. We see thousands of people a month. They're coming in for activities classes, assistance, if that's what need, what's needed. Um, it's just an amazing place and thrilled to be able to be part of that. I love my job. I love what I do. What What is your exact task there? Are you the director? I'm, yes, I'm the regional director. So mm-hmm. basically, I oversee the daily activities and things that are going on with the staff. But also, as regional director, I am charged with providing services and information to all of the the city services and state and local services and social services for seniors in the city on the northeast side. Wow. So from North Avenue to Howard to the lake to the river, if there's anything around senior stuff going on, then the city can be of help on there. Wow, that's quite a task. It's that's busy. A, yeah, very busy. All right, so you've you're gainfully employed, <laughs> unlike some of us at this point. Um, yeah. Uh, what made you? What attracted you to run for this office? Sure. Um, It's exciting. Uh, The fact is that over 30 years I've been working in the community, and mostly my background has been in social service delivery. So my undergrad is in social work. I came in 79 to work for Little Brothers of the Poor. When my uh, parents thought I was joining a cult, and I, you know, it's why? just amazing. Why were you not raised Catholic? Yeah, I was raised Catholic, absolutely. But it was um, living in community and making a small stipend, but doing uh, doing work with isolated doing God's work, yeah, doing lo- working with isolated, lonely seniors, and and they were like, okay, well, you got to leave Ohio to do that, and I said, well, yeah, kind of. I think I'm ready. And so basically, fast forward, working in social service, but also then being able to. Uh, run a nonprofit. I was executive director of Home Housing Opportunities and Maintenance for the Elderly. Right. So I was able to run a nonprofit for about five years. And from that point, I was able to work and have been working with the city of Chicago for 11 years, Department on Aging, and overseeing the information line at City Hall and then working at the Levy Center. I see every single day the faces and hear the voices of the people who are affected by legislation and policy and what it does to their lives. And I've been involved just politically in all kinds of things. Um, And you and I, our paths actually have crossed. My friend Jerry Gorman was involved in emergency and some of the things we've been working on together. And and just good people find each other. You're (laughs) you're welcome. Because he was right up here. Yes, yes. You know, again, uh, uh, good people working on all kinds of really wonderful things. and just the whole idea of getting more involved and politically getting more involved because it affects our lives every single day is really important to me. So also being able to be an independent Democrat, independent voice down in Springfield, I think, is at a crucial time very needed. 
And so we're, we're excited. Our campaign is excited to, uh, to be involved and have wonderful people to, that are supporting us. Well, it was also an opportunity because the, sure. our, our uh, outgoing uh, representative got elected to the sure. city council. Sure. Her, our, a friend of the place here, Harry Osterman, sure. um, moved on to what he really wanted to do in life, which was be his own neighborhood's alderman forever. <laughs> Uh, so that was an opening. Sure. And sure. it was an opening that a lot of people looked at. You were there. And uh, what did you think about the process that occurred for filling that opening? Sure. You know, the process is the process. So we were all part Uh-oh. of it. <laughs> and you were, I was there, We, you know, 23 people were there. It was what it was. And it is, you go and you go through it. I was a learning experience for me. And then you move on. And we I think were it was a learning clear. experience for everybody was because it? I, yeah. it hadn't happened before. Right. Right, I, I mean, think that's at least true. Not in the way it did. Now, a lot of folks would say that it it was pro forma because <laughs> people may have already made their decision, and that decision also affects your chances because someone else has filled the spot now Correct. for uh, a little over a year, or is it quite not quite a year? Ten months. Ten maybe? months. That's right. Yeah, less than a year. So that puts you at a disadvantage. We're going to be facing a similar thing if, if, for example. An alderman gets appointed to sure. some other seat. Sure. Um, what is, what would be the guide word to look for the 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 system to set in motion if if you can describe to actually have an open process to replace someone? Well, I think it's the power of the people and let the people decide, and that's really what this whole campaign is about too. We're very excited about bringing choice to this process and. And moving on. And really, you know, there's so much work to do. At this point, we are, as I see every day, important decisions being made in Springfield that we need to have a strong voice down there for us. And so I think it's about the power of the people. Let me ask you about some of those choices. Sure. Um, We just finished a veto session. Yes. And uh, while we had um, put off uh, or delayed, I guess, the vote to support both Sears and the CME. Yes. Um, that got voted on this week, and yes. the people once again lost, in my opinion. Yes. Um, what What would you have done with that? You know, I know what you know when I read the papers and I look at what is going on and how they pro- position themselves, and I think that it's all about being able to support the, the, the common small business person and the person and the people. So it would be the same that way. I think I would probably vote for the people, not for the CME. And, and, you know, we would have done the same. But I think that, again, small businesses, our message is around, I like to think of it as the small, the four S's. It's going to be around seniors, schools, small businesses, and safety. Those are going to be our issues that we're going to make sure we highlight. But also, it's going to be about the people that live in the 14th district. We are an incredibly diverse district. We go from Foster up to Howard, all the way even into north of Evans, uh, south part of Evanston to Mulford, mm-hmm. from the lake to almost as far west as Western. We are an incredibly diverse district. Very, very. And that is going to be the primary focus. So when I go, it will be those people that I represent. And when I take a vote, it will be those people's voices that I hear and their faces that I see. Mm-hmm. Do you, wh- what do you stand on, where is your stand on gaming in Illinois? I think it's, uh, you know, I run a senior center. So let me just preface that by saying... You play a lot of bingo. Yeah, <laughs> we were just play. They played yesterday, as a matter of fact, with ComEd. I love bingo. I tell you, love bingo? Do sure. you win? I don't play it very much. Oh, okay, okay. But well, I, grew, I, don't I grew up Catholic, so, you so know, well, we did yeah, bingo. It's kind of the staple of the weekend, yeah. yes. <laughs> but I think, I think that basically gaming is here, and I don't, you know, I... Finally, like you, I only know what I read in the papers and what those positions and what those those I, legislative Paula, things go for. I gotta interrupt you. I I have to know more than what I read in the paper. You have to know more. I agree with you. You That's must. Part of it. You must also. I agree with because you because the paper doesn't print too but much I, you news. You know, the legislation is going to look at jobs and economy and those kinds of things. So I don't know. I think that basically we'll have to look and see what that all shakes out to be. I know for a fact it's still on the governor's desk. He hasn't signed it. I think there's a lot to work out around the issues for gaming. Are you I for gaming you in that. Chicago? I don't think that I would be, but I'm not sure. It might be possible. I think it's possible. It's a possibility. And you got to look at the realities of it and take a look and see. 
Okay, and the other thing that happens a lot, even though it's not one of the four... Oh, yes, one of your four S's is schools. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's definitely a, the key to a productive life, that's for sure. I know it was for me. And how, how do you think the state uh, legislature is faring as far as supporting well, education? I think, yeah, I, I think it's... They passed some good legislation last year, you know, with the, some of the reforms that they had tried to implement, but I think we have a lot of ways to go. You know, it's all tied into being able to really support our teachers. Again, those are the people on the front lines. Those are the people that see the children and talk to the children and are with our children every single day. And I think that you can't beat up on those teachers if, in fact, you're going to support the whole school system. So I think we have to be better at how we're supporting teachers and parents and getting all of the factors that make a child's education important. And so it's, a, again, you know, being my social work background, you look at systems. You look at, okay, a child comes into school and hopefully they're ready to learn today. But if they're hungry, if they don't have the proper clothing, if their parents or parent is home and they're struggling because they don't have a place to live or, we, you know, there's an epidemic right now of homeless children, of uh, basically of being food insecure. You got to look at all those things. And those are how you tackle the whole piece of how a child comes into your school. And so schools are parts and very, very important parts of our whole society, but also our communities. And so around the school is the community that supports it. Mm -hmm. And so we need to really start also looking at how we are supporting our schools, but also the way kids come to school. Any, any notions about the funding formula, which you know, starts in, and ends in Springfield, but uh, completely runs how the school system I, you is know, supported here in Chicago. I think we got to look at all that. I think everything's on the table. I, at this point, there's a lot of need, and I think we have to know that the schools are at the base, the foundation of how we build a good community. You know, my, my whole background is about livable communities, too. I mean, what we look at as we see a society that's aging, and I know nobody wants to talk about that, but... Oh, no, we all want to talk about it. We want to talk about it endlessly. The scene, you know, we're all... You can our, watch the wrinkles form as no, you sit here. No, not you, Katie. You're, you're only 25, but I think oh, yeah, that yeah. basically we have to look at how every single day... I mean, I work in a system in a place where... We're seeing people as we age and age in place, we want to stay in our communities. So what does that look like for us? And what does that look like for our families? And that's including education and transportation, health care, all the things that are important to us as we go and want to stay in our neighborhoods. And that's what you look at, as a, again, as a system. Seniors in particular now who are aging in place want to know that they're going to be able to sustain themselves, stay in their homes, they don't want to go anywhere. They want to stay in their homes. And how are we going to support them in doing that? And I think that there's a bigger vision here that has to be looked at. And we're very excited about looking at that in livable communities. And it's something that, you know, in 20 years, the population in Chicago is going to go from over 400,000 people being 60 plus to over 660,000 people. That's a 59% increase. Nobody's talking about it. We need to start talking about that, and we need to start looking at what that means to all the things that we want to support us in our neighborhood so that we stay engaged and healthy and active. Well, you might have an edge up because seniors vote more than any other age group. Well, you, we hope. You uh -huh. know, I don't know. We, always, we hope everybody votes in this election. As you know, it's going to be an interesting election. The election is March 20th, so it's the primary. Um, obviously, we've got... On the Democratic side, we've got President Obama, so that's good. But, you know, there's other issues and other things that are going to make, hopefully, a lot of people come out and vote. So we want to say to folks, please, don't forget and be, stay engaged. Yes. And, Paula Basta, one other thing. Um, there's an awful lot of uh, attempts being made around the country right now to um, sort of make it more difficult to vote. Are you aware of some of those efforts? So difficult to vote. You mean by for, by which I mean, even especially even seniors. Uh, sure. It hasn't happened in the state of Illinois because the state of Illinois is kind of a country unto itself <laughs> in some ways. Um, but uh, the issue in uh, certain areas are um, requirement to have having a picture ID. Correct. Affecting seniors especially Correct. because Correct. unless they 
have the time, money, Correct. and inclination to go Correct. and get a, a state ID. Most of them no longer have driver's license. And, you know, that's a great, again, a great piece of how we advocate every single day at the Senior Center because we actually work with the Secretary of State's office in getting those IDs to those seniors who need it. Plus the other piece is the immigration yeah. issue. But, and, I mean, you know, should, should we need a picture ID to vote? Well, to vote, yeah. I think that lots of seniors have already been voting for a very long time. So they're not necessarily the population I'm most worried about. I think it's really going to be those who don't have the ID, who are those who are or have been, for whatever reason, homeless, mm -hmm. or those who have lost an ID, mm -hmm. those who are um, a little more tenuous in, the, in society, yeah. so that it's hard for them to do the paperwork. We see those people at our center every single day, and that's what we're there to help them do, and we do do that. We advocate for getting them that information. Good. So it's all out there, but we need to bring those folks the services they, they need. So, Because everybody should access that. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Um, given that we, I'll, I'll just, one last, the kind of the sure. economic development question. Sure. Um, we're in a state that is completely broke. Yes. Uh, twice, I think. <laughs> but who's counting? Exactly. Um, and we have uh, Governor Pat Quinn who has um, made his mark in some ways. Other ways, he's, uh, he's a target for a lot of folks, um, having been a maverick and um, so not really in the in crowd, uh, which for some of us voters makes him uh, very uh, sure alluring. Sure, absolutely. Um, because he's independent of some of the interests. Um, how do you feel, what is your general approach in this time of the 99 and 1% and broke state sure. uh, coffers? Sure. How do you approach developing a new way of looking at all of the funding imperatives that face uh, government right now. Again, you know, it's it's about how you make those choices around the state that continues. They, they may we may we are broke, but we're also we just passed a big increase in income tax and stuff. So you know, there's money going in. It's just how you make those decisions about what you do with the money that you do have and how do you increase that revenue. And I'm telling you, it's about the decisions we make around the people that we represent and how those priorities are set. And I would agree with you that Governor Quinn is getting a lot of grief on a lot of different levels for the things that he's decided. But so, so we basically have to always look at what's important for the people of Illinois and what everybody, in, especially when you look at the district, how it's going to affect their lives and the decisions that you make. So when those priorities are talked about and as those things are shifting, and things and monies are beginning one way and, and not in other ways, I think there has to be a voice that says you got to stop and you have to remember who matters. And who matters are the people. And that's where you make the decisions to help and support and buffer those who really need our support and help. And again, those decisions are made economically. The development is all around, in our district, small businesses. Yeah. When you look at all the businesses up and down Clark Street, just from from Foster all the way up to Howard. Clark Street needs and has a lot of businesses, small businesses that are thriving, but we also have a whole lot of businesses that have closed and that, that at this point, especially up in Rogers Park, are a lot of empty storefronts. Mm -hmm. And how are we looking at what are we doing to bring infrastructure and bring the neighborhoods to where they can be vibrant again? And if those conversations and decisions about how you put resources can go to those things, that only helps the people that live in those neighborhoods. So if, if I would could just ask another question, but before I, I let you go. Sure. And uh, I want to say Floyd Webb is in the house, so uh, we might finish up our show with uh, some banter about uh, things that he's thinking about, but he's not paying any attention to me right no, now. No, he's not. He's actually reading. Yeah. So there you go. Tell him I not said the, so. <laughs> um, You're next. Um, <laughs> anyway... Uh, <laughs> There are a number of people working on the issues that you were just describing. Rogers Park Business Alliance, for example. Sure. I just talked about sure, the shop the chambers, local sure. stuff. Um, and they, they don't think of themselves as a chamber. And um, But I, I'm talking about Andersonville, Edgewater. They have chambers. Yeah, exactly, yes. exactly. Right. And how do you feel in our district that work is is proceeding in general? Do you, th do you think we have a good array of assistance for small businesses in that way? I think we can always have more, but you're also looking at the worst economic times in the past 40 years. So yeah. at this point, the realities are that there needs to be more 
infrastructure to help our small businesses and to thrive and to grow. Because we've seen over 29 businesses close on the north side. And I think we got to look at that and say, okay, how are we helping them stay active and stay where they're opening? They're not closing, but they got to stay open. Right. And also to bring new sort of fresh ideas as to if, if you have a small business that's not working, there's a reason why they close. All right, so let's look at that. And then how, what kind of evaluation is done and how can we be better? And what do the people that live in that neighborhood need and want and will sustain that shop so that it can only stay open or grow? And hmm. I think you've got to ask again the people that live there, but also do some sort of an evaluative process. And I would think, for example, up in Rogers Park, the Business Alliance is doing that. Andersonville, I'm sh they're doing surveys in Edgewater and Andersonville as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that can only help us gather that information again, hearing from the people. What is it that they want? Why is it that they stay? And what is it that we can help them enjoy more about where they live? I have this sense that up here, your yes. district, yes. that we have more community involvement with those questions yes. than a lot of places in the city. Which is great. I know. I think people don't appreciate what we actually do have in place now from uh, decades of community involvement on, in these questions. Part of which is based on independent political Correct. approach. Absolutely, Katie. So I we're excited about that. Too. We're happy that you've stepped up, Thanks, willing Katie. willing to serve the people. Thanks, Katie. And uh, one wonderful. last thing: do you do you have a thicker skin than me? Because gosh, isn't it hard to run for office? Oh, I say I said to this before, and I say it again: I run a senior center, so you know, lots <laughs> of our seniors tell you exactly what they need and what they want and when they want it. And I love the fact that we really are able to engage in good, vibrant conversation back and forth every single day that I'm there. And, you know, they're wonderful because they tell you what they think and they tell you exactly, many of them, what it is that they expect. So, and I think that's not a bad thing and it prepares you. So your seniors have given you a thicker skin. I hope so. Oh, my gosh. I think so. All right. Well, good luck to you. Katie, thanks a lot. And um, It's been and a pleasure. Yeah, you... Um, Keep on the high road. Thanks. We're excited. And yeah. um, we'll, let's hope for a huge turnout. I agree. I agree. would be Always wonderful. that. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Let's hear it for Paula Basta, candidate for 14th District State Rep. If you want to meet her, she can come up and shake your hand. Um, Floyd, are you awake? Get yourself up here. Um, I don't know. I, Floyd just took a long...